Audient is extending their lineup of ID interfaces with the ID48, which has even more in and outputs, the ability to use inserts and is usable on a desk or rack mountable. Let's have a closer look. Hey, Julian Kraus here and with me I got the Audient ID48, which is as of the moment the largest interface in Audient's ID lineup. As mentioned, it offers a good amount of connectivity, which makes this a candidate for a studio centerpiece. But before I'm getting ahead of myself, full disclosure, Audient sent me the interface in return for an honest review. As always, all measurements in this video and opinions are my own and Audient has no say in the making of this video. With that out of the way, let's dive in a bit deeper on the hardware before checking out some measurements and the software. On the front you can find all kinds of controls. You get 8 gain knobs to control the 8 microphone inputs of this interface. For each channel you can toggle the phantom power individually via the switches and there's also a 100Hz high pass filter and a pad which I will show you in the software section. Further to the right you will get a level meter to show you your output level and right next to it you have your main output volume knob. This knob is multipurpose in that you can press and hold it and it will turn on and off the interface. Besides that you will also find four buttons, one to switch between the second set of monitor outputs, which can be handy if you have two sets of studio monitors and you want to quickly switch between them. And there's another button for talkback. Two more buttons are customizable, again more about that when we're looking at the software. Further to the right you will get two quarter inch headphone jacks with individual volume control. And quick note, these headphone outputs are fully independent from each other, which means that you can have a different mix for each of them. Just one thing I noticed while using the interface is that the headphone volume knobs are quite close together and can sometimes be a bit finicky to use, especially if you have two headphones plugged in. Here I would have wished for a bit more space around the volume knobs or that they are controllable via the software. Now you thought I would forget about the instrument inputs all the way on the left, but I actually wanted to use them as a segue for transitioning to the rear of the interface. Because when you use them you will override channel 1 and 2, which are otherwise microphone inputs which you can see on the back. See? Smooth. Ok, so here you have the 8 XLR and TRS combo inputs, which accept mic and also line level. And now this is where the ID48 sticks out from the crowd and that's with the two DB25 connectors. This essentially allows you to do three things. Either insert another hardware device in line of the signal path so that you can use the preamps of the ID48, but for example add an external hardware compressor in between. You can also completely bypass the preamps in the ID48 and send your line level signals directly into the ADC input. And thirdly, you can use the connections to send audio from your door through hardware effects and then back into the ID48 to use them in your music production. I think this opens up a lot of possibilities, especially if you like using hardware based effects in your workflow. Just a quick word of caution, the DB25 to XLR breakout cables you usually find are not so cheap, so if you plan to use them I suggest to look them up beforehand. Further to the left you will find two sets of balanced monitor outputs to connect your studio monitors. Besides that, there is a BNC word clock in an output, so you can keep multiple devices in sync. Apart from all the analog connectors, the ID48 also offers two TOSLink in and two TOSLink outputs, which extends the number of channels by 16 in and 16 outputs at a sample rate of 48 kHz and running in ADAT mode. At 96 kHz, this number drops to 8 digital inputs and outputs, which is a limitation of ADAT and that's the same behavior for other interfaces. By the way, you can also toggle these connections to SPDIF if you like. Obviously, you will also find a USB-C connector on the interface to connect it to your PC. And last but not least, there is a power connector directly on the interface. It's great that there's no big power brick dangling around somewhere and the power connects directly to the interface, but there's also one downside to this which I will get to when we're having a look at the measurements. This is called foreshadowing. Alright, I thought we'll also have a quick look inside. What I find nice to see is that the interface seems to be pretty modular with each board with its own separate task. What is nice to see is that the interface uses very high quality converters. On the analog to digital front we have multiple chips from ESS, in this case the ESS9842 Pro. On the digital to analog side, Audient has spared no expense and uses, if I counted correctly, 8 Cirrus Logic CS43198 DAC chips. In that aspect the ID48 is very well equipped to deliver high quality audio, but as always it's not only about the chips but also about the implementation and that's why we're going to have a look at a couple of measurements next. By the way, if you've enjoyed the video so far, please subscribe, this really helps out the channel. Let's start with the mic inputs and with them you can see a very flat frequency response at the maximum gain setting. 
This is essentially a worst case scenario and still all frequencies are recorded equally well. The small drop off at 20 Hz is really not audible, don't worry about that. The sharp drop off around 48 kHz is due to the maximum sample rate of the interface, in this case 96 kHz. This is as expected and as long as you don't want to record bats, that's absolutely fine. Distortion looks also good. Here you can see that with a typical microphone level signal, distortion components sit below the noise floor nearly all the time, just ever so slightly creeping in close to the maximum. But I would argue that this is an audible under normal conditions. Let's quickly talk about noise performance, starting with the dynamic range. This is the ratio of the strongest signal that the interface can capture and its noise floor. And this is especially interesting in dynamic recording situations like recording drums uh, with condenser microphones. Here the ID48 is right up there in the excellent category with 107.6 dB A weighted. Not much else to say, that speaks for itself. What's also important is preamp noise, especially in situations where you use a dynamic microphone with a low output level like for example an SM7B. Oh look! An SM7B, what a coincidence. Okay, if you know me, you might know that I use this microphone pretty much every time when I do a preamp test, and that's not because this is such a great microphone, but because it needs truckloads of gain and this brings out the noise of the preamp. So this is pretty much a worst case scenario. Have a listen to the noise law of this setup. Pretty good if I do say so myself, and my measurements confirm that. The ID48 lands right next to its siblings from the ID series, right up in the excellent category. The maximum gain you can achieve seems not that high, but I don't think this is an issue because in the software you have a boost feature, and if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need more gain, you can simply boost it a little and you're good to go. This also means that there is absolutely no need for a cloud-fed header with this interface, as this would not reduce the preamp noise any further. But I just switched the microphone from being connected to channel 1 to channel 8. Have a listen to the noise again. Did you hear anything special? If not, you can ignore it and happily continue your life. If you heard an ever so slight buzzing sound, then, well, you got good ears. Here's the noise slightly boosted again. Remember when I mentioned that the power supply is physically inside the ID48? Well, it seems that at very high gain settings, it causes just enough interference to creep into the channels that are closest on the right side of the interface, which are channels 7 and 8. That's obviously not so great. I talked to Audient about that and their response was that at full gain, the noise introduced is within their acceptable levels. I think the good news is that for channel 1 to 6, the issue is essentially non-existent as they are physically further away from the internal power supply. So if you plan to use dynamic mics, then I would use them with these channels and then you will be fine. For channels 7 and 8, I personally would stick to condenser mics because then you need less gain and then the issue vanishes completely. So is there a workaround? Yes. Is the buzzing quite low even when used with dynamic mics on channel 7 and 8? Yes. Would I have expected all channels to be completely buzz free for an interface in this price range? Also yes. Now you have to decide if this is an issue for you or not. Also please check the comments because it's not unusual for manufacturers to resolve these things with future hardware revisions. I don't have any insider information here, but if I get any info, I will pin a comment. In fear of boring you to death, I will just quickly touch on the other measurements and also show you what you gain from bypassing the preamps. Line inputs, no surprise here, they are essentially the same as the mic inputs. The frequency response has an ever so slight roll off towards the higher frequencies, but I doubt that you can hear that in practice. Dynamic range wise, we are once again in the excellent category, nothing more to say. Distortion wise, it's not state of the art, but I also don't have any complaints here. When you skip the preamps via the ADC input, you can see that the frequency response is now completely flat. Distortion wise, we are also looking very good now with distortion components lower than minus 110 dB, which is inaudible for all intents and purposes. The dynamic range also increases to 121.5 dBA, which is about 4 dB more than the line inputs. Now, I would lie when I say that there is a big audible difference for bypassing the preamps, but at least from a technical perspective, higher number equals better and that's always nice to see. On the output side, for the monitors, you can see that the frequency response is once again ruler flat. Dynamic range is excellent with 126.3 dBA, 
that also means that you're essentially guaranteed to not hear any noise from the monitor outputs. Distortion components are so low that I had a hard time measuring them as the interface outperforms my audio analyzer. Nothing to add, this amount of distortion is completely inaudible. By the way, the line output measurements via the DB25 connector are actually the same as the monitor outputs, so I'm not going to show you the same measurements again. Needless to say that the output quality is excellent. Last but not least, let's check out the headphone output because here I was pleasantly surprised. Here you can see the complete overview and all the measurements are essentially green, with one exception which I will get to in a second. The important part is to know that the frequency response is super flat and the nice part is it stays flat regardless of the connected headphones because of the low output impedance. I would love to say that Audient just changed that for me because I always complain about that, but that's likely not true. Still, it's great to see that they could lower the output impedance on the ID48. Power-wise you have more than enough output to drive all but the most exotic headphones to loud listening levels. Distortion-wise it looks really good with higher impedance headphones and decent with lower impedance ones. The noise level is also pretty low and I could not hear any noise with over-ear headphones. The one thing I noticed in my measurements is that there is some small amount of leakage from the left to the right channel and vice versa. That's a so-called crosstalk. This does improve significantly with higher impedance headphones, although I have to confess that even with low impedance headphones I could not directly hear any negative impact and would argue that the crosstalk is still fine. I would have liked to see a better measurement though, you know, higher number equals better. Well, lower number in this case, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's check out the software side of things. When you open up the mix application, you get greeted with this interface here. This gives you all kind of control over the interface, starting with the high pass filter and pad buttons for the eight microphone inputs. Here you can also switch the inputs from mic to the direct ADC path that I showed in the beginning of the video. You can do even more things like stereo grouping inputs and toggling solo or mono mode for monitoring. For all the channels you can also set the faders and the same goes for the outputs. The level meter also gives you a good overview of your recording and playback levels. On the right side you get even more controls, first of all you get multiple independent mixes and you get some further controls for talkback, phase inversion, mono and so on. When jumping into the routing menu you can set up which output should receive which mix and you can get some further control over your clock source, switching between ADAT and SPDIF and even trim to level match your second pair of studio monitors. I quickly want to highlight that in the talkback setting you can choose any input on your PC, must not necessarily be an input from the ID48. So you could for example use a cheap USB microphone on your PC for talkback and save one more channel on the interface for recording. There's even a standalone state which lets you store the mixer settings inside the interface and then you can use it without being connected to your PC if you don't need the recording functionality. Mixer settings can also be saved into presets and obviously you get control over the sample rate and buffer size. Overall quite a lot of stuff you can do in the software. Oh and I nearly forgot about the latency, here is the round trip latency with different sample rates and buffer sizes. At lower sample rates times are already quite good and with higher sample rates they improve even further and I would classify this as a very good latency performance. Alright, what's the verdict? All in all I quite like the ID48, it gives you a nice amount of in and outputs for your studio and has extension capabilities with the digital in and outputs. The biggest pros I see with the ID48 is that you get to insert your analog equipment into the signal chain and you can bypass the preamps entirely. This is something that not many interfaces let you do. You also get additional features like talkback and the option to create multiple independent mixes and all that in a rack mountable package. Things to consider are that the ID48 does not have any digital effects that are processed directly inside the interface like you can for example find on a Moto Ultralight Mark V. Some controls like mic gain and volume control are hardware only controls so you have to physically turn a knob on the interface. With audience own Evo 16 and the Focusrite 89 24 gen for example you can set the mic gain directly in the software. And obviously there is the one point I mentioned about the slight hint of buzzing on two of the eight channels under very specific circumstances. I'm still a bit torn on this one because on one hand it's not really a problem that you will come across often and there is a workaround, but on the other hand I also expect that all channels perform equally well on an interface like the ID48. Again you have to decide if this is an issue for you or not and I urge you to check the comments in case there's any update on that in the future. But that also makes it difficult for me to just outright recommend the ID48. 
I would still say it's a great interface if you are aware of this one limitation. Besides that, if you're looking for an interface as a centerpiece for your studio that has lots of I.O., offers you the option to integrate outboard audio hardware into your signal chain and is extendable via ADAT, the ID48 is definitely worth a look. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more and I will see you all in the next one.